What's up guys, it's Zen here with Zen Trading Academy. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go through the types of orders that you can use and also how to read the order book. I'm going to share my tips and tricks that I've learned along the way and tell you how I would use these orders. So I need your help to smash the like button if you want me to release my secrets to you. Okay, I appreciate your help in destroying the like button and let's jump straight in. So, the two types of orders that all of us know is the buy and the sell. But there's actually three different types of orders that you can use for both sides. They are the limit order, the market order, and the stop order. So the limit order is the type of order that majority of the traders use. For me, I only use limit orders because it gives me the most control over my cost. It basically means you're putting an order to buy or sell a stock at an exact price. So let's say the price is trading at one ringgit and you set a buy limit order at 90 cents. What do you think will happen? Your order will just sit there at 90 cents until somebody sells it for 90 cents. Because by placing this order, what you're saying is, I will buy no higher than 90 cents. And on the flip side, if you set a sell limit order at 1 ringgit and 10 cents while the price is trading at 1 ringgit, what you're saying is, I will sell no lower than 1 ringgit and 10 cents. So until somebody buys it for 1 ringgit and 10 cents, your order is going to sit there until the end of the day. However, in some cases, you don't really buy at the exact price, right? For example, if the price is trading at 1 ringgit, but you set a buy limit order at 1 ringgit 10 cents. Remember what it means? It means I will buy no higher than 1 ringgit 10 cents. And since the stock is trading at 1 ringgit, which is lower than your 1 ringgit 10 cent limit order, do you end up buying at 1 ringgit or 1 ringgit and 10 cents? Since the current price is not higher than 1 ringgit and 10 cents, you will buy the stock that is selling at 1 ringgit. Okay, let me give you a scenario. Let's say the price is trading at 1 ringgit, right? And there's 10 shares selling at 1 ringgit, and another 10 shares selling at 1 ringgit and 10 cents. If you place a buy order to buy 20 shares at 1 ringgit and 10 cents, since you're willing to buy 20 shares, no higher than 1 ringgit and 10 cents, and these shares are selling below your limit price, you will end up buying 10 shares at 1 ringgit and the next 10 shares at 1 ringgit and 10 cents, bringing your average cost to 1 ringgit and 5 cents, even though you place an order at 1 ringgit and 10 cents. But most of the time when you're using a limit order, you're going to be buying or selling near the traded price. So it's a good way to control what prices you're going to get filled at. And that is why most traders will use this type of order. Now let's move on to the second type, which is the market order. Some brokers have it, some brokers don't. But it's basically for instant execution, whatever the price is. That means the price that you're going to be filled at is completely up to your broker, but your order gets executed immediately. So market orders are usually used by people who still phone their brokers to make orders instead of doing it online. These are usually casual stock market investors or just casual traders. As a trader, you should avoid market orders because you lose control over where you would buy and sell. You might get unlucky and get a very, very bad fill and that will affect your profits. Now the third type of order, which is another important order, is the stop limit order, also known as the stop order. Similar to the limit order, it's an order to buy and sell at an exact price, but only if it reaches your stop price. This means that if the price is trading at 1 ringgit and you set your stop price at 90 cents and your sell price at 90 cents as well. So when the stop price reaches 90 cents, your broker will create a 90 cents sell order on your behalf and if there are buyers for it, it will get filled. The risk here is if the stock drops too fast, your order might not get processed fast enough. Because once the stop is triggered, the system will still have to create an order that you set. By the time your order is processed, the stock might have continued dropping. And it's likely that you have not managed to sell your stock. So I would usually set the limit price a few cents lower than the stop price to make sure I get a fill. Stop limit orders work on the buy side as well, but I strongly suggest you never use it. In case you forget about the order, the price might come to your buy stop and fill you in, but you won't be here to sell it when the price drops. So there are a few other terms related to orders that you should know as well. The first one being the validity. This indicates how long the order is valid until, and by default, it should only be valid until the end of the day. The next term is one lot. A lot is basically a unit of sizing, and it differs from market to market. But for Bursa, when we refer to one lot, we mean 100 shares. So 10 lots will be 1,000 shares, 50 lots will be 5,000 shares, and 100 lots will be 10,000 shares. Now let's move on to how to read the order book. Each broker will have a different looking interface, but the logic should apply to all. So on the left side, you can see the best buy. This shows all the buy orders that are queued up. 
and vice versa on the right side, you can see all the sell orders that have been queued up but not filled. Now let's focus on the buy side first. The first column shows the prices, so 3 ringgit 27 cents, 3 ringgit 26 cents, and so on. The second column with the yellow numbers indicate the number of lots that are queued. Remember, one lot means 100 shares, so at 3 ringgit and 27 cents, there are 173 lots, which also means that there is 17,000 shares being queued up at 3 ringgits and 27 cents. And the last column on the left indicates the total monetary value, which is just 173 lots times 3 ringgits and 27 cents, and we get 56,000 ringgit. It's just an indicator of how much money is parked at each price point. So on the top, we can see the yellow number, which indicates the sum of all orders from the five best buy prices that you can see. And the white number is the corresponding total monetary value. Now let's flip to the sell side. These carry the same logic as well. The first row showing the best sell prices, second row showing the total number of lots on each price, and the white number show the corresponding total monetary value. Again, on top, we see the yellow number, which indicates the sum of all orders and the white number that corresponds to the total monetary value. If you want to see how price moves, make sure to check out my daily live streams because I show the order book on the bottom left. I'll play a short clip of how I explain the order movements during a live trade. You can watch the order flow on the bottom left. How fast, how fast these, uh, these orders just blink in and out of existence. So you can see 11,000 here is probably going to blink away really quick. It's probably going to go like 7,000, 3,000 and disappear. Once the, once the buying comes in. So watch these orders right here. There we go. Just like that. All of the orders just melted away in like quarter second. So this is momentum. This is moment. This is what momentum looks like on the order flow. Where the orders move non-stop. And then this is what momentum, this is what no momentum looks like, where the orders just stay stagnant. You can see that the numbers stay the same. Because nobody is buying and selling. But on Bintai, the exchanges, the exchange of shares is crazy. The amount of volume that's getting exchanged every minute. So in the previous minute, 4 million um, shares got exchanged. Make sure you head over after this video to hear the full commentary on the full trade. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. If you learned something new, make sure to smash the like button and check out my other technical basics videos on my channel. As usual, thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.